Okay, so get ready to dive deep, like really deep. Deeper than your French press. Way deeper. We're talking about coffee. Ah, uh, the nectar of the gods, or, well, at least the fuel of productivity. Exactly. But have you ever stopped to think about where that cup of coffee comes from? You mean beyond my trusty coffee maker? Way, way beyond. We're talking centuries ago. Yeah. We're using some pretty amazing excerpts today to uncover the whole story from, like, the very first cup. Sounds fascinating. I'm ready when you are. Okay, so picture this. Ninth century Ethiopia. A goat herder named Kaldi. And he's got these goats. They're munching on berries from a particular tree. Okay, I'm picturing it. Go on. And the goats, they were wired, like bouncing off the walls. Kaldi's probably wondering what those berries are laced with, right? I can only imagine his surprise. Little did he know, he stumbled upon the world's biggest secret. No kidding. And that's how it all began. From those jittery goats, coffee starts spreading. By the 15th century, boom, it hits the Arabian Peninsula, Yemen, to be exact. And that's where things get really interesting. Oh, absolutely. Yemen is where coffee transformed. They started roasting the beans, experimenting with brewing. This is where we see the birth of coffee culture. Wow, so like all those fancy brewing methods we have today. Yep, they have roots in Yemen. It's amazing how those early innovations shaped the coffee experience for centuries to come. Right, and from there, there was no stopping it. By the 16th century, everyone's hooked. Coffee takes the Middle East by storm. It's in Persia, Egypt, the Ottoman Empire. Talk about a caffeine craze. And those Ottoman coffee houses, they were revolutionary. Think vibrant social hubs, places where people would gather, sip coffee, debate, share news. Coffee-fueled intellectual and social life. Coffee, the original social media. Exactly. It's amazing how this beverage sparked revolutions in more ways than one, but its journey wasn't over yet. Oh no, not even close. Fast forward to the 17th century, and we've got new players on the scene with the Dutch. They were like, <laughs> coffee, we'll take it global. Am I right? You know it. They were masters of trade, and they saw coffee's potential. Smuggled beans, strategic plantations. They even established large-scale coffee cultivation in Java by 1699. And that's how we get Indonesian coffee today. Precisely. The Dutch turned coffee into a global commodity. And they weren't the only ones, right? Even King Louis XIV of France was like, hold my gold-plated cup. Right. He became a huge fan in the early 1700s. And with that kind of royal endorsement, well, you know. Everyone wanted a piece of the action. And let's not forget... His love for coffee transformed French colonies like Haiti and Martinique into major coffee producers. Yeah. Talk about a lasting legacy. Absolutely. And with demand skyrocketing, by the 1800s, Brazil steps onto the world stage. And well, you know what happens next. They basically become the coffee kingpins. Exactly. It's amazing to see how coffee's journey intertwines with history, economics, and politics. It's not just about the beans. It's about the global tapestry they weave. It's like coffee fueled the world. <laughs> and speaking of fuel... We can't forget what coffee did for the Enlightenment. Ah, yes. This is where coffee goes from a social drink to a drink of deep thought. We're talking Voltaire, Diderot. These intellectual giants practically ran on coffee. Those Parisian cafes were their think tanks. Can you imagine the conversations, the ideas that were sparked over those steaming cups? It's mind-blowing. And that just goes to show coffee has this incredible power to bring people together, to stimulate conversation and innovation. From goat herders to philosophers, it's fueled some of history's most important... It's true. And as we move into the 20th century, things get even more, well, brewed. We have technology entering the scene. Oh, absolutely. This is where convenience meets craft. 1901, Italy brings us the espresso machine. Intense. Then in 1908, Germany gives us the drip brew. Two completely different methods. I know, right? It's like the coffee world exploded with possibilities. Suddenly, there's a whole new level of flavor and nuance. And people were here for it. That's how we get the specialty coffee movement of the 1970s, right? It wasn't just about a caffeine fix anymore. It was about sourcing the best beans, finding your perfect roast. Uh, absolutely. It became an art form. And then there's the third way of coffee we see today, which takes it a step further with a focus on ethical sourcing and sustainability. It's like coffee with a conscience. Exactly. It's amazing to see how far we've come since those first energized goats. From a goat herder's observation to a global phenomenon, it's safe to say coffee has had an incredible journey. It really has. So the next time you enjoy a cup, take a moment to appreciate everything that went into it. The history, the culture, the science, even the goats. And who knows, maybe you'll even spark a revolution of your own. Now wouldn't that be something?